1961, Mercedes-Benz introduced the new fintail, or in German, Heckflosse. This was the only time Mercedes-Benz would offer fins on their cars. The W110 was a mid-sized vehicle with engines ranging from four-cylinder to the bigger six-cylinder in select models. This would also become the platform for some custom coach-built cars. Some were family estate wagons, but others were purpose-built cars meant for service, such as purses and, in my case, ambulances. These cars even came around to the rescue when James Bond was in town. They were so cool, in fact, that even tiny little toy miniatures were made of them back in the 60s. These cars were workhorses, and when they were decommissioned, they were often hauled out for scrap and crushed. And that's just where I found my car, 1,500 kilometers away in a scrapyard since 1985. Now let's see about bringing this car home. Tomorrow, I'm heading out on the road to go pick that ambulance up. Um, I only saw it from, you know, a couple feet away. I didn't really check it out that great, but I knew it was rare and I knew it was cool and uh, it would be a great company vehicle for our little antique store. So um, hopefully it's not too bad and I can actually get this thing fixed up. I'm going out there tomorrow with a friend, Charlie, who's got a truck and trailer. We're going to drive nonstop, basically, the 13 hours uh, all the way to get to, uh, to Manitoba and load the car up. So the adventure starts tomorrow. Uh, we're going to hit the road bright and early at 7 a.m. So uh, as of today, not sure what adventures are going to come up along the way, but uh, I'll take you guys along for the ride and hopefully some cool stuff happens and we get this ambulance home safe and sound. So stay tuned and let's see what happens next. So just got in off the highway, stopped in Lloyd Minister, Saskatchewan slash Alberta. It kind of rides the border between two provinces. Uh, just here with my friend Charlie. We have his truck and trailer here. So I'll show you the trailer uh, and kind of what we're up to. So this is Charlie's rig. He's got the 2500 Ram with the diesel. So more than enough power to haul an old ambulance down the road. There, there he's filling up over at the pump. <laughs> and we are going to be hauling this old Texaco sign uh, to a fellow I met on my last trip out here, he wanted uh, uh, me to find him a six foot Texaco sign and my friend uh, Dwayne had one. So we are driving this down the highway just sort of as a goodwill gesture and delivering it for free for a friend. Uh, but you can see it's an old one. You can tell it's got the green star, it's porcelain double sided. This would have been the main uh, sign for the station. And it's from 1937, have a look. So it's all dated, so pretty cool piece. So we gotta go drop that off. Uh, but obviously before we get the car. So next stop, we'll be dropping the sign off. Gonna grab a bite to eat and then uh, head back on the highway. So we're on the road. We left at uh, 7 this morning from Edmonton, uh, now on our way through Saskatchewan, hoping to get uh, to Bozager tonight where the car is located and pick it up. Um, maybe I'll try and find some other antiques along the way. I'm really excited to go through this scrapyard again. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, and excited to show uh, my friend Charlie some of the stuff out there too. So uh, down the bumpy highways we go and uh, see what we can find down in uh, Saskatchewan and into Manitoba. There was lots of cool stuff to see in Saskatchewan, from old oil racks to old cars and barns, uh, old oil cans and all kinds of other things. We loaded up some stuff and now we're back on the highway. So as we're driving down the highway here, uh, I'm trying to text to make some arrangements to pick up some other stuff that's about an hour or two down the road so we can make good use of our time and make good use of the highway trip. So right now we're trying to figure out how to get a really cool Firestone porcelain sign and maybe some other neat stuff too. So with luck I'll be able to uh, make these deals happen before we get to our destination just down the road. town in Saskatchewan and home of the potash exhibit the most exciting sounding exhibit look there's a sign for it right there potash exhibit fun for all you can go and visit the mounds of potash and maybe build a potash sandcastle fun for children everywhere see what you're missing out see what my kids are missing by not coming with dad on these road trips potash exhibits well on to the next so just stopped for dinner not too long ago um, 
the plus side was that it was free. The downside is because it was free because they actually put mushrooms in it, which Charlie's super allergic to, so we luckily had allergy bills with us. Um, so he's hopefully gonna live. <laughs> I should hope so because he's driving right now. Um, just on our way through Manitoba, and um, yeah, I'm gonna try and get to the motel here. It's gonna be pretty late by the time we check in, so next time you see us, we'll probably be uh, tomorrow morning. But uh, yeah, so far no casualties, but almost killed by a mushroom. Okay, so it's the next morning, um, bright and early. It's 6.30 a.m. here in Bozager. Got the truck uh, loaded up with yesterday's goodies and uh, off to the scrapyard. Hopefully today we don't get any ticks. Last time I got a tick when I was in town here, so we're gonna use lots of bug spray this morning. So off to the scrapyard and see what I can find. And here's a sample of a few of the things we picked up yesterday. The 100 year old bicycles, some old porcelain signs, a really old John Deere uh, spark plug rack, display rack, uh, some old William Penn cans, and uh, just some other neat stuff too. So off we go. Beyond this unassuming metal fence lies a treasure trove of old cars and antique parts and all kinds of neat stuff. So we're going to get in there right away and go check it out. A barracuda. That's that old show van over there that was used in the movie. I'm trying to find the Mustang Mach 1. So the Cushman. This is actually a fantastic old boat. It looks like a 57 Chevy. These are super, super rare. It's a sure flight. Would love to get this thing out of here. So as I'm walking around the scrapyard, I'm kind of looking around. Do you worry when you see an old abandoned vehicle with a nuclear like symbol on the side? <laughs> Radioactive something? Hmm, interesting. Let's just hope it was an ambulance. But, uh, and the, all the toxic waste is gone. Mm. I'm gonna stay away from that one. I'm not sure what this is, it's a fast pack. Maybe like a Fairlane 500 GT or something. It's kind of in the bush, it's hard to see. I'm gonna try and get over there very carefully. Something. Oh, you know what? I think that's the cyclone. I think that was a cyclone. And there's not much left of it. <laughs> but that was probably a pretty hot car at one time. That was a Mercury cyclone. ELT Camaro. The guys are into Camaros and stuff. Kind of cool. Lots of these little old Yamahas around too. Or this is Suzuki. I'm sorry. There's the emblem there. Mostly complete. It's another bike sitting over there. Maybe an old Honda. Let's go check it out. Well, it looks like it's got a Honda tank. Let's have a look. Oh, this is a scrambler. On the scrambler, probably from the 60s. Pretty cool. So I've crawled over this coat cooler and wall of scrap, and I found this little building here. And I'm having a look around, and I came in here because I saw this. I don't know what it is. We're gonna find out. Looks like an old sign. It is something. And sometimes an old piece of metal is just an old piece of metal. But you never know, there are some old cans and stuff in here, so there's potential. There it is, a 69 Mustang Mach 1. I'm gonna see if I can get over to it. I gotta try and work my way through all this bush. 
and shrub and fields of skidoos. So, pretty rare car to be sitting in the bush here. So, hood's off. Probably sitting around over here somewhere. Interior, it's got some other stuff in it. Floors are rotted out. It's got the steering wheel. It's got the dash still. This is a GT car. It's got the actual louvers on it. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Looks like it was green originally. Some green paint in there. So, yeah, it needs lots of work. But then again, it's a pretty rare car. There's another, looks like a Cadillac over there. This he says is an ambulance too. It's a uh, old military. Oh no, this isn't it maybe. No, I think it is. Oh look, there's a door off the little Red Express. That means there was a little Red Express that died out here. Which is kind of sad. Pretty cool looking truck. Really old skidoos. Not even sure what that would look like. gotta be an old timer. That's a Dodge, maybe that is the ambulance. He said there's a military ambulance over here somewhere. But I'm gonna work my way out. Yeah, that's the Mustang, what's left of it. Some other cool old boats over there. But that uh, one boat is particularly cool. In fact, that might be worth picking up and having somebody haul for me. Cause uh, that tow that behind a really cool old truck or trailer that looks kind of the same, pretty neat. A big old piece of machinery or boiler. I don't know what this thing is. Maybe somebody knows what this is. Oh, it's a cat off the truck. I know what it is. It's just sideways. Another little to do. Acres and acres and acres of stuff. Well, this is the bike. At some point, somebody spent a lot of money on the custom job here, but uh, it's been outside for a while, so needs some work. But kind of a funky looking thing for sure. So admittedly, the car is way worse than I thought it was. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing, but we're gonna get it home and have a better look at it. probably ever bought. It's still kind of cool. So as we're loading it, the rear heater started to leak. Red, oozy, old fluid. Now it looks like the ambulance is bleeding, which is extra creepy. Ugh. There were tons of surprises in the scrapyard. Bikes and old cars and all kinds of neat things. But now it's time to spin on to our next location and head out of town. What? on the back of the trailer, the bikes in the back, um, we got all kinds of other stuff. Got this really cool old Mercury outboard motor, it's the 50s kind of style at Art Deco. Um, the car, yeah sure, the car is a bit of a beater, I'll admit it. <laughs> you need a lot of work and I have this feeling like there's ticks in my hair so I keep brushing through my hair hoping that I'm not getting ticks inside. Uh, we're just pulled over to stop at a really cool little museum and uh, then we're gonna hit the highway just after I guess we had grabbed something to eat. So uh, stay tuned, we'll show you more soon. So in the town of Selkirk, Manitoba, just off the of Lake Winnipeg and just off the river is the Selkirk Park. And right at the entrance of the park, you see this is really cool. And these are big ships. These aren't just little kind of boats. These are uh, like ocean going kind of vessels that were used on Lake Winnipeg. That just gives you an idea about how big Lake Winnipeg is. So we're gonna go and uh, check out the park here 
and see what there is to see. It's just a gorgeous, beautiful, sunny day. So a perfect day to do this kind of thing on. So this is part of the inside of the SS Kenora. Pretty cool old boat. I'll find a little bit uh, of more information out for you. It was built in 1897. Uh, operated on the Lake of the Woods and uh, 1917 was cut in half and shipped to Winnipeg by rail. Uh, they use it for a season as a floating dance hall, which is kind of cool. And then uh, in 23 the ship was bought uh, and uh, brought to Selkirk and used for fishing out on Lake Winnipeg. So we're going to go walk around and have a look at it. Here's a whole diving outfit there. So the brass helmet, that helmet's probably worth a fortune actually, the whole suit's probably worth some good money. And there's the bellows that would have sent the air down to the guy. Mm -hmm. Pretty neat. So just in the lower kind of storage area where the, would have brought the bags down, see there's a trunk, this little elevator would have brought everything down and they would have stowed the passenger's luggage down here. And they've got some displays and stuff set up, I mean look at this, outboards much? Look at all these old outboard motors. That's a big guy right there, holy cow. Military green, I mean, industrial, a lot of these are pretty cool. Old Johnson Seahorses and lots and lots of cool stuff. Oh look, more diving helmets. Makes me feel like we're in a sunken ship. Kinda cool. What's the sea captain's favorite letter in the alphabet? R, of course. This is the old galley. There's the kitchen. They had lots of windows up at the front here. That's where they would have sat around, and then this would be the main staircase. A little bit fancier, and then up we go. Go check out where these people would have gone. This is where all the rooms would have been. Well, still are. Not much space in here. You better hope you like the person who's on the top bunk if you're sleeping down there. Hey Charlie, I never finished sea captain school, you know why? Because I was a skipper. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. So we've checked out pretty much all the little boats here. And uh, we're going to start heading our way back. Maybe grab a bite to eat and then carry on. So the adventure continues. So everything is loaded up and on the back of the trailer. We are headed back down the highway. Um, I don't know if you can see out the back there. There's the front end of a really funky looking chopper. Um, I kind of bought that because I had a customer who needed the front fork so the bike ended up being in okay shape so I'll probably just sell it as a whole bike. I've uh, got lots of stuff in the back here and yeah going to pick up some more including a bike which is a bicycle that is that's 100 years old over 100 years old really great shape it still has the original bill of sale and paperwork and all that so really cool. Uh, so we're on our way out there to pick it up and then we'll be back on the highway and then try to find a hotel. So um, yeah, on with the road trip and you know, away we go. So after a busy day of looking through scrapyards and picking up cool stuff, we've got the car on the back, we've got the motorcycle on the back, and we've got lots of antiques. So we're gonna go look for a hotel room and call it a night. So next time you see us, it'll be morning and we're gonna start our next day fresh and looking for more cool stuff. It's the next day. Just leaving the motel here in Saskatchewan. Gonna head for Saskatoon. See my friend, uh, Shane, who's got a bunch of old stuff. And in daylight, and after watching off the uh, ambulance the other day, it's less mossy now. But uh, yeah, off we're gonna go and head down to Saskatoon and then back home. Back to Edmonton, safe and sound. Now off to the shop to unload, get the bike off the back, manage to find a buyer. Actually, a friend of mine needed the bike for parts, so uh, it's gonna go to his place this afternoon and then uh, call it a day. It's been a lot of travel, a big trip, um, and I'll end off with showing you guys some of the stuff that we got. And here it is, coming home. We're gonna try and put it in the garage, so it won't be able to park anything in there for a little while, and it's probably gonna stink. 
But I uh, talked to a guy today and he said that um, he might be able to get the metal work done on it. So all hope might not be lost. Well, I made it back safe and sound and I'm at home. The ambulance has managed to fit its way into the garage here. So I'm starting to go through it and have a look and see what the last people left behind and kind of tell the story of the car. Um, along the way, I ended up getting some treasures. Uh, got um, an old oil rack, got some old uh, Redline Hot Wheel toys, um, some old signs, uh, uh, ice cream clock that's glass on the front. So I got a bunch of cool stuff. Gonna be putting that out at the shop. Um, but let me give you a little tour of the ambulance. So it actually does fit in my garage. It basically comes right up to the uh, wall. I had to move my tires and stuff, that all the stuff I had over against the wall. Now it doesn't fit. Um, but the ambulance is in there. Um, have enough height on the ceiling too, lots of room. It kind of squeaked through that garage door. You can see the vent on the top of the roof. Just made it through that door. Um, this has a six cylinder engine in it. It's a 1965. Um, we're gonna open up the door and have a look see. What's neat about it, now I obviously haven't done any cleaning or anything to the car at all. Um, just rolled it from a field basically into my house. We washed it off at the car wash to try and get some of the, uh, um, like there's still a bit on the roof here, moss and stuff, so I'm gonna have to take that off later. Um, seats obviously filthy dirty. Um, surprisingly the leather is not too bad on uh, the backs of the seats. It's got the uh, original radio in there. Um, the switches are underneath the dash for uh, operating the uh, sirens and lights and stuff. But open the glove box door. I was looking in and there's uh, the registration and the, the paperwork, basically the title for the car. Um, here's the original build sheet for it, which is pretty cool. So I'll have to read that and see what I can learn about it. My German's a little bit rusty, so I'll have to work on it. But it is a 230. Um, pretty neat that it's got all this stuff with it still. The serial number, production numbers and all that. And like I said, they didn't really make a whole lot of these, so kind of rare to find one. As I was kind of going through, uh, discovered some cool stuff. Uh, well, it has, still has the big lights on the side and I've got the uh, siren and the, the roof for the top. Um, the light for the top, I just don't have it on yet. We're gonna open up the door here, it's a little sticky. Obviously, it's been sitting outside since 1985. Not a great thing to do to a car. So if we look inside here, um, it's a little bit dark, but uh, the floors, which you can't really see in this shot there, the floors unfortunately are rusted out. There's some compartments and stuff, and I was looking up top in that one, and uh, it looks like they were camping with it. So there's some camping stuff in here. Um, these are little jump seats here that would fold down, so that's for the paramedics to sit on these little jump seats. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this wood platform out and um, try and just open it up so it's a bigger space so I can use it for hauling. And I'll leave the little two jump seats there because I think that's cool. The rest of this stuff I will keep. I'm going to take it out. I'm just going to clean it up and keep it because all the little cupboards with the drawers and stuff like that, that's all original to the ambulance. I don't want to lose that. Um, it's just not practical for me for what I'm going to do with it. So, yeah. It uh, needs a fair bit of work, clearly, but a cool old car and hopefully I can uh, start on the tin work on the bottom and start getting some of that rust out of there. So thanks for tuning in and watching the adventure of this old ambulance coming home and some of the other stuff I bought along the way. If you like these videos, you can subscribe. Um, you can check out our website too where we sell antiques and um, we also have other stuff on there too at curiosityedmonton.ca or you can come visit us live in person if you're ever in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Um, we are just about five minutes from West Edmonton Mall, one of the really big shopping malls left in the world, big giant one. Um, we're not too far from there, so if you're in town visiting, come by and see us. Be happy to see you guys. Um, but uh, for now, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye for now.